Alright, hello everyone. So, considering I did a voice reveal in a prior video, I was thinking of doing my own voiceovers and narrations of a new series I could be starting, which could be called Ship Reviews or Ship Opinions, or something along those lines. And for the first video in the series, I will be covering the Rook, the new Tier 7 British battlecruiser of the St. Vincent line. Now, I played this ship for quite a bit, for 82,000 XP, and I do enjoy it quite a lot, actually, with only Sinop being probably my favorite at tier 7. Now I will be covering the stats of this ship real quick, showing you my build, my commander build as well, and then later uh, feature a good game I had. So to start off, armor is classic non-existent battlecruiser armor, with a 16mm bow and stern, which gets overmatched by 250mm guns and above, which means Graf Spe and Scharnhorst at that tier. The mid part, the casemate and the deck is 26mm thick, which, uh, which is overmatched by 380mm guns and above, but will bounce 356 if angled. The belt armor is 305mm, and there is a small portion of 102mm of armor on the, on the near the end of the ship, which is deck armor, which is quite useful while kiting actually. The only part of the ship that could get actually hurt while kiting is this angled part near the end, which is 26mm thick, as well as this conning tower, which is 38 and Both of these, if hit, can actually arm battleship AP. But apart from those spots, uh, I've had quite a lot of success kiting the rook, actually, with a lot of shells, shells hitting this deck, this armor belt, and the barbette and the turret, and usually bouncing or non panning now, the Citadel on the Rook is quite poorly armored, actually. 16mm at the top and 26 at the front and the rear. However, there's a big chunk of armor on top of it, which is, of course, this armor belt. Which means that even though I did get caught broadside a lot in the Rook, and I caught other Rooks broadside, I pretty much never citadel them, nor gotten citadeled. The only time you would get citadel is if you really are facing some big guns like tier 8 US 406s, for example. After that, let's go to survivability. Hit points 59k, pretty standard for tier 7, with only Nagato and Sinop breaching 60k. Torpedo protection is 13%, which means torps hurt a lot, pretty much all. Artillery, it's got 9 381mm guns that reload in 31 seconds, almost the, almost the same, but like one second slower, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, its velocity is 836 meters per second, and it, the AP deals 11,400 damage. So, the guns are pretty nice, as well they are uh, battlecruiser dispersion, which makes them quite tight, and the range is 18.2, which again is kind of standard for tier 7, with only Nagato and Colorado having better range, I think. The torpedoes are actually quite nice. They are there's four single torps, two on each side. They have a range of eight kilometers, and they deal almost sixteen thousand damage. They travel at sixty one knots, so they're not particularly fast, but they are great when when so to say laying landmines while retreating, or or just when pushing into a flank. The airstrike, like whatever, it's there. AA is actually a meme. Like, it's said to have 68 AA rating, and apparently it has, I mean, not apparently, it does have DFAA, but the AA is, like, actually non-existent. Continuous is pretty much a tragedy, with mid-range AA guns having somewhat of a good DPS, but it has only 3 flak, which is trash, literally. And, yeah, carriers really love the Rook, really love to strike it. However, the maneuverability, that's where the battlecruiser thing comes into play with a maximum speed of 33.5 knots and a turning circle of 950 meters. However, I did build rudder shift, which gives me a rudder shift of 11.9, which I do realize makes this thing handle almost like a cruiser. And I also built full concealment, which gives me 11.7 kilometers detection. Which, now I'm not a professional for these mid-tier, so to say, ships, but that's really good for tier 7. And I did often manage to get away unspotted in really nasty situations. 
So the um, now for the equipment I'm using, of course I have mods, so I have the so I have it here. Uh, I am using main armaments mod one, damage con mod one, aiming systems mod one, and steering gear is mod one. Now I have a twelve point commander, Jack Dunkirk, and here I have emergency repair specialist, Brisk. This is the first ship I used Brisk on, and I did find it quite fun actually. Uh, grease the gears, adrenaline rush, and concealment. So uh, yeah, that's my short review of the rook in the port. Now, now I'll be opening up a replay. So see you there. All right, so here we are in a game consisting of tiers five through seven, with luckily no DDs nor subs, which will allow me to utilize my concealment quite well later on. So there is a single carrier, which is the German Wesser. And he will also come into play later, uh, leading to some interesting situations. So here on this map, most of my team is heading east, while it's myself, a Helena and a Tiger heading west. Which means we are pretty much guaranteed to be outnumbered here. So I don't want to be too aggressive, because I want a quick get get getaway if needed. So we spot the Duke of York, which we take a pot shot at. But we end up missing. And also the Miyoko is spotted pretty much full broadside, so that's a bit unfortunate. Now the enemy Rook fires a long range shot at me, and I start turning in instantly, because even though I w I'm probably not gonna get Citadel, I still don't want to take a big side. Luckily the Rook doesn't do a lot of damage, but the Duke of York hits me for 10k. So our friendly Gokase, which is the new Japanese light cruiser in testing, uh, manages to torp the Miyoko once, and I try to set up my shot to maybe get a death strike, but I underestimate the Miyoko's deceleration abilities, so that doesn't go very well. Uh, I do get unspotted here, and I continue moving on, while the Helena and the Tiger in front of me just sit, sit in one spot. So my uh, idea is that one of them is probably going to get torped by, torped by the Miyoko, because Miyoko has 10 km range torps, and that's not going to end well for ships. We see a Miyoko, full, uh, excuse me, Budioni, full broadside, and I expect to get a death strike here, but somehow only get two pens and two overpens, even though most of the shells seem to have landed waterline, but okay, sure, sure thing, whatever. So now um, I pick up my engine boost and start engine turning boost. away because I definitely want to be in a more of a kiting position at this point. When my guns reload, I take another shot at the Midioni, probably hoping to kill him here. And I did think I was gonna finish him off because I think I aim pretty well. And then four pens gives me only 7,000 damage somehow. Even though Torpedo in a perfect that world that should be like 12, 13k with four pens. And as I, as I said, the Tiger gets a death strike by the Miyoko's torps. Now I'm hoping that my Helena finishes off the Miyoko, but my Helena is focused on the Duke of for some reason. So it's down to me to finish off the Diana. Which we do manage to kill with, a, with I think, one or two shots. So now with the carrier uh, quickly closing in on us, uh, we need to really start turning away and utilize our concealment a bit better. Of course, we cannot do that now because the carrier is keeping us spotted a bit. So, with that in mind, I I start turning back in towards the Duke of York because I feel like I can probably citadel him if he maintains his course here. However, unfortunately, the shells go a bit high, and I only get some pens for 11k. The vessel does actually lose four planes before getting the drop off. And uh, lands one torp off on me. Torp's not full rendering for some reason. Not sure why. And at this point, I'm trying to go unspotted, and I do. However, this is my first misplay where I actually take another shot at the Duke of York because I'm keeping my PD, trying to sit it on the guy. So that 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 gets me spotted again for 20 seconds. And of course, uh, after after firing, the, the detection is raised for 20 seconds. Uh, which means that by the time my detection timer runs out, which you can see, 3, 2, Engine boost 1, activated. the Miyoko will be having enough time to get an another HE salvo into me, and unfortunately, that will set me on fire. Now, one question is, 
Why do I DCP the fire, by the way? Honestly, not fire. sure. Probably calling it a misplay again. However, uh, now that I think of it, that might have not, not actually have been a misplay if the carrier wasn't here. Because fires do increase your detection radius by 2 kilometers, so the, uh, DCPing that fire if the carrier isn't in the game could have actually helped me. However, of course, carriers negate any, any stealth, so that of course doesn't work here. Now, one interesting thing, uh, look at the plane kill ribbons. One, two, three, four, five, and then I look up, like, what the hell is going on? I realize, like, this carrier is probably not even trying to dodge my flag. All three of it. So he loses all of his planes without even getting the drop off, which is quite fortunate. As I see a photographer emerging from the middle of the map. And I do manage to get a great shot into him for 17k. And then, um... Of course, Miyoko sets me on fire again. Uh, fire! I take a look at where 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 the rook is. He is inside my range now, and I see should I finish off the Furutaka or, or the rook? Start turning my guns for the, at the Furutaka, but the Budioni finishes him off. So right now I do I, I am unspotted and will be holding my fire until I see the Miyoko come back because I want to finish that thing off first. Because fires are definitely going to be taking me out faster than any AP, probably, at, at this point in the current situation. So the, the Miyoko sh shows up, I pop my I pop my engine boost to try to evade any possible AP, and as I see the friendly carrier drop the Miyoko, uh, down to 5k, uh, I fire hoping to kill him here, however the game splashes my shells all around him, because of course RNG exists. So in the meantime the enemy carrier gets spotted, and that's going to be probably my new priority. Uh, in the meantime, he, that same carrier gets uh, uh, comes back at me with a torpedo bomber squadron, who I basically one shot. Again, the carrier, uh, this Vesser, first off, it's a German carrier, meaning his planes have like zero HP, and also he's not even trying to evade AA, or should I say flak. I see the Miyoko stationary and take a shot pretty much at his bow because I did expect him to start accelerating. But again, that, that ship accelerates a bit too quickly, and I get only one over them. Here I start turning back in towards the Rook, because I see a friendly Budioni closing the distance, and, I hope, and I'm hoping he can actually assist me with the Rook, and maybe the Rook to New York. Uh, but I get my priorities straight, of course, start with the camera. Because the Vesser uh, does have the hull of the of the Hipper or Prince Wagon, which means I do manage to hit him for 25k. That that hull of German cruisers at tiers 7, 8, 9 is notoriously easy to get a lot of damage. However, unfortunately, the Budioni and the Kirov actually turn back out and decide to leave me alone. And I realize that a bit too late. Now I do fire off my two torps right of the, right of the rook, as I, was, as I was hoping he will be turning right to get f full salvo into the Budioni. But now I realize that the Budioni and Kiro are long gone, and I, I, try, tur I try turning uh, right to get my left side torps into the rook, but unfortunately with Prince Heinrich coming into view, Duke of York and rook focusing me now, there's pretty much nothing to, left to do. I check my torps, miss, and that pretty much concludes this battle. Pausing the replay now so it doesn't close my game. And that's pretty much all I wanted to feature in this video. Showing how, how good the rook can be played pretty much as a cruiser, playing with a concealment, and just overall being effective e even in an unfavorable situation. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say for today. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a, a like and leaving a sub. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these narration and voiceover type videos. So yeah, with that being said, I'll see you all next time.